Okay guys, welcome back to another a gym a vlog. Today we are going to be training some legs. Yep, some great old legs. Um, just going to be focusing on isolates as per usual. In all honesty guys, with how these legs are going this prep, I am not feeling great about it. But um, at the end of the day, my upper legs aren't terrible. It's my near the knees. So I'm just going to be focusing heavily on doing a lot of... Um, you know, things to revive the vastus head, so the VMO and the and the lateral sweep of the legs. So just to try and get those bulbous parts to pop up near the knee, really, if that makes sense. So I'll be doing a, a fair bit of uh, leg extensions, and then if I can, try to do some uh, more quad dominant kind of things. I'll be doing a lot more stretching as well. I don't know about in-between stuff, but I have found that that can help me. So I might do that, and I say me specific because I wouldn't always suggest stretching between uh, exercises, but if uh, stretching between exercises does help, then absolutely do it, and I find that it does for me. It can, in some cases, decrease strength and, um, and stuff like that, so that's why I'd say be very careful, uh, and you should have pretty good mind-muscle connection at that point too, just in case, so you can uh, gauge how your, you know, your joints and structure are feeling with your legs or, or the muscles now being stretched, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, uh, be very careful if you're stretching a lot in your training sessions, just be thoughtful that it may lower the strength or integrity of, uh, muscles holding things together. Okay. So I'm going to be doing some leg extensions. I'm going to be doing some hamstrings of the sorts, probably the, uh, the, uh, kneeling hamstring curls, uh, for sure. Cause that felt fantastic. Honestly, uh, definitely some, um, mm, mm, I'll probably still do the lying hamstring curls as well, um, uh, as especially as a pre-activator uh, and something to really get those hamstrings grabbing, as I find that if I, as long as I squeeze the glutes and, and hump into this, the bench that I'm laying down on, when I do curl that leg up, it feels like everything along the hamstring bites quite well. So uh, there's probably a high chance of that on the cards. It's just making sure that I can get a lot of volume in on the uh, leg uh, on the um, quad head. So, in all honesty, guys, there is a possibility that I may just do a shitload of working sets on the um, leg extensions to try and make up for that because there's not a lot of machines that you can really do to target um, isolation of the quad, especially near the knee. But we'll see how we go. Compounds just seem like something that puts me up shit creek pretty quick, so it's hard for me to actually want to chuck in uh, compounds on leg day just while I'm prepping. Out of prep, it seems to be fine. In prep with the less calories and feeling pretty tired and all that other kind of stuff, then yeah, it's just, it seems to be a menace. And I still obviously need to, when I'm in my off season, do a lot of functional shit to try and strengthen some stuff. It's just very hard to get that uh, adaptation happening when you're limited with calories. Okay, either way guys, a uh, bit of a mind splurge there. Let's just not waste any more time and get to the gym and smash some leggies. Let's do it. And always remember to squeeze the juice. Okay guys, so welcome to the gym here at Silverbacks in the functional fitness room upstairs. I've got the one farmer's carry here. Now, why do I have a farmer's carry here? Because it's leg day. I'm actually gonna roll out my calves on this. So I just did a bit of a warm up before on the, uh, what do you call it? The fan bike uh, without using the arms because it's leg day. So just pumping those. It's actually such a great way to warm up the legs. I find the fan bike's a really good type of resistance for the old leggies. And then I did some single legged, uh, I just like one at a time um, lunges which I'll actually probably show you just after this. But what I thought I'd quickly do is just show you how I roll out my calves. Now, I usually do it in a, on a barbell or any kind of bar-ish thing that's sitting above ground. Reason why is because you want your leg to dangle a little bit. But ultimately, I can do this. I should be fine. And what I'll do is I can actually just put my leg on that and just twist and roll. Now, I will admit, this is pretty high. I've never done this before. <laughs> I'm just demoing it, experimenting in the gym. But uh, I can definitely feel that sitting on some trigger points, which is exactly what I want to do. Yeah, as I was doing those one-legged lunges, uh, one, yeah, one-legged lunges uh, on the bad leg to try and wake up the, uh, the quad heads, which was working, I did feel a lot of tightness in that uh, calf. So I, you know, like I've said before, I'm pretty sure it's a uh, 
player in why my knee is a bit bung. So it's just good to release these knots. So I'm gonna be doing this just for about 10 minutes. You know, I'll move it up and down the belly of the gastrox and the uh, soleus. So the gastroc will finish about halfway and then I'll hit the soleus just around uh, the bottom there, or at least the, I guess you could say it's the tendons of the gas, uh, the gastroc, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah, woo boy. Yeah, so there's some gnarly boys, gnarly triggery, uh, triggery boys all through there. So I'm gonna be sitting on those for a little bit, releasing them, just so that when I do do any kind of, I guess you could say knee exertion, I don't want to feel like my calf is stopping it, you know what I mean? Because it definitely does factor somewhat towards resisting that knee bend or kind of stunting the quads activation in it. Oh, yeah, so leave this with me. I'm going to do this for a little bit. Maybe do it on the other leg just so I can even it up. And then we'll do a few more uh, quad head activators. I'm going to do some glute band work to warm up my hips and also my hip flexors. And then we'll jump on in. Sounds like a plan. Okay, guys. Oh, let's do it. Okay, so what I was just doing then is hitting the hip flexors, <clears throat> just a standard two sets. The first one was just a standard knee up, 10 times on one side than the other, and then I did five standards and then finished on five kind of up, twist in, twist out, just to get kind of a bit more range of the hips opened up and activated um, so that they're feeling nice, warm, and able to help anchor so I can fire off hitting my glutes a little bit better. So now I'm gonna put the uh, heavier band around the knees and we're gonna do some uh, glute activators. So we'll start off, probably do some monster walks as they're a pretty surefire way of getting glutes on. And then we'll move into doing some glute bridges. Yeah, let's do it. These are fire hydrants. Doing it with a band's hard, especially this kind of band. It's pretty strong, but... Or clamshells, if you want to call them that. Holy crap. They're fried. Oh, that really did it. Good. Let's give them a bit of a bit of a stretch, just in a deep squat. Yeah, it felt like a good warm-up, guys. Yeah, rolling out my calves did some good. Leaning into my calves now, way less resistance, way less before. I was doing this straight after doing some single-legged lunges to wake up the quad. 
and it was just really resistant. I could barely drop into this comfortably and just sit here. I'd always have this leg trying to throw back and I'd twist and want to fall well over. But this, oh, I could sit like this way more comfortably. And geez, my glutes feel on. Okay, great warm up. Hopefully this means a good session. <laughs> Actually, just to quickly show you what I was doing with waking up this leg, what I was doing is just a single legged squat, I mean lunge in slow motion. Up, control. It's all about control guys, don't go too quick. You'll use the muscles that you naturally favor. And clearly I don't favor the knee based muscles, the vastus heads all that well. So this way I can really feel those heads turn on and let them do their job. Oop, losing balance. If you find you lose balance on these ones, guys, you can get a broomstick, just chuck it here. And that usually does what you need. It's feeling heaps better already. As soon as I came in today, they were feeling so bad. But getting this neural activation and blood flow in there, it's twitching all through here, guys. You can't see it, but there's a lot of twitching happening in this VMO, which is usually empty and weak. You can even see some veins, which is sick. So it's good to see blood flow definitely making its way into those muscles, which have been deprived of blood flow as they've been looking pitiful lately. <laughs> oh, I do feel it still in there, in the tendon in there. Oh, it's very tender to touch, but it is what it is. I can't do much about that. And we just try to balance it off, getting the other side in there as well, which obviously doesn't feel anywhere near as bad. It's interesting how you naturally favor. So I'm naturally favoring this VMO and I'm kind of maybe favoring something around here, favoring probably my hamstring a bit more, but I don't know, definitely not my VMO on this side. So it's weird how it's kind of like they're favored, they're not. So that's a problem I obviously need to work on, but hopefully you can see it. There's a bit more better blood flow in there now. Okay, either way, they're not too bad. I don't want to cook it because I've still got to do shit, so let's move over to the machines, guys. Okay, we're down now in the leg area. Getting on the laying hamstring curl, just like the usual, uh, single legged at a time, just trying to really wake up the hamstrings, make sure we do it with good form. So the whole point of this exercise essentially isn't to go stupid heavy. It's actually probably to get more volume than it is to die on the final reps. Uh, we can do that later on the kneeling hamstring curl. So right now we'll just punch for about 15, nice controlled reps on probably 15, 20 uh, pounds, whatever that is. And then uh, go from there, let's do it. Just three sets. in the glute. Yeah. Nice. Just two more on this side. Good. Okay, happy with that. We'll do that again. Um, probably that weight. I really wanna feel very comfortable with this weight. Uh, even though I can go a lot heavier, it's about making sure that I, I recruit the desired fibers because Yeah, I can still feel some fiber fibers. It's not far enough the best So I need to pay more attention to those and really get them grabbing and feeling strong more active I could definitely feel other fibers that are lifting the weight very comfortably That's why I go heavier, but I'm just gonna promote those guys to be doing the work which I don't want to do so 
have a smidge of a rest, and then another set. Set number two. Same weight again, guys. Remember, we're trying to wake up those dormant fibers. Pass on. Away we go. Ooh, boy. Yeah, those slow reps definitely bloody left a mark. Got some slow ones. Make sure we don't lose that glute activation and hammy string tie-in. Ooh, boy. Oh wow, I felt that. Oh, holy crap. Yeah, I definitely felt that. <laughs> okay, bit of a rest. Might be a cop out, but I'm gonna stay on 20 kilos because honestly, I felt like my leg really got a lot out of that. And what I could just do to make it harder is actually just go a bit heavier than, you know, destroying my legs. Okay. <sighs> okay, we go. Oh, oh yeah, I feel great. more for 17 we'll go back to this leg do some two really slow ones oh boy yeah oh. oh yeah I think that ended that well oh. okay we finished strong on that Woo. Looks like they've got a little bit of a pump, which is good. Okay, let's move over to Quetties. Okay, let's get these bad boys done. Hopefully these don't feel too bad. Again, we're gonna start light and work our way up to try and prevent agitation of the, that uh, I don't know, tendonitis. Okay, let's do it. Um, yeah, it's on 80, so that's baby weight more or less, so we should be fine with this. We just got to make sure we take our time and listen to our body. Okay. Again, squeeze the glutes, turn on the hamstrings, and then go for maximum security and activation of the quad heads, which I can definitely see, so it's good. Yeah, that felt really good. Weird feeling though. Feeling something funky in my other leg. It doesn't feel like tendon based though, so. But it is shooting. Where's it shooting? I don't know, I'm gonna try and fix that in between this set because I don't like that. It's just super distracting. I can't get full contraction, like right at the top. I'm trying to get that squeeze, it's just like, nah. Kind of causes a shooting kind of nerve pain. This leg feels good though. Well, not too bad. So we'll just uh, only up it by a bit at a time. Take our time and make sure we can get some good activation and burnout out of these quads. Okay, let's have a rest. I'll try and figure out that weird stuff right now. <clears throat> okay, set number two. Gave my leg a bit of a stretch and all that kind of stuff, so hopefully that stops that weird feeling popping up. We're on 100 now. We're just gonna slowly, incrementally pop her up. Let's do it. A 
That feels a lot better. Yeah, I'm still getting that feeling, not as bad, but as the set went on, it built back up. It's definitely coming from my hip. And that means, I feel like it's hip flexor, or maybe just to the side. It feels like just to the side. I might be able to target that now and get rid of it. Yeah, I'm gonna try and dig my thumb in, just here. ITB band region. Fingers crossed, this doesn't feel too shit. So I'm gonna go up to 120. Hopefully, me digging into there just then helped. I wonder why. What, did I sleep weird? I don't know. Oh well. Nothing to it but to do it. Fingers crossed this goes alright. You know, it was a great warm up, but uh, maybe it was just something that's, I don't know, slightly agitated that hip flexor. I don't know. I started feeling good towards the second half. That's why I went for 20. <sighs> Felt good. Oh, I like to guess it. That's all right. Still a bit funky, but I started like really squeezing up here around my hips a bit more. And that seemed to lock that in a bit. Okay, let's go up to 140 and keep this showing. Show it happen. 140 now. Hopefully this feels as good as the other one did. Let's up it up to 160. So I've done 80, 100, 120, 140. Now I'm doing 160. We're doing a really nice pyramid to really get the muscles firing. Okay, here we go. acid oh boy okay done with the 160 do I do one more set do I do one more set I've done five okay we'll do one more one more and I'll have a toss up if I stick to 160 or I'll go up to 180 180 okay I'll do 180 <laughs> okay give me a breather oh, okay something a bit cheeky that I've been doing is some single-legged Bulgarians so with those, nothing crazy. Actually, I'll show it over here because I can actually hold onto this bad boy while I do it. And uh, ultimately, just sitting here, grabbing on, putting my foot up here. And then, and with this, for me to get it into my quad head specific, I kind of shoot onto the ball of the foot. So I lean onto that. Almost like I'm going onto my tippy toes as I get lower. So I do lift that heel up on purpose. Oh, I'm feeling that. On the leg. I'm actually starting to get veins in my quad.
quad heads, which is crazy. This one seems to really bring it out. So the goal is not to really be using anything on that back foot. I'm trying to really just put a lot, if not all of my weight on here. I should almost be able to take that off, really. Oh yeah. Two more. Last one. Oh, that's feeling great. <sighs> okay, that sucks, but in a good way. Okay, I'm gonna have a smidge of rest and go back to the quads for the last set. Okay, let's try the 180. Finish strong, preferably. <laughs> just a smidge worried about this leg now. It's bloody annoying me. It just keeps giving me a bit of a niggle. Okay, should be all right. There we go, nice and strong. <clears throat> Uh, uh, okay, only 12 that time, but it's just best to stop there. Something's just not secure there, and that's starting to flare up lightly. That's actually really fine compared to what it has been. That's annoying me. Either way, not too bad of a finish. Let's move over and smash out those kneeling hamstring curls. Okay, so we're back at the uh, kneeling hamstring curly boys. Let's chuck it up to 35. And we'll go off from there. I'm um, just going to do three working sets on these. I feel like I've been here for quite a while. Uh, and my legs actually feel pretty worked, which is fantastic. So, you know, it was a good idea doing um, the leg extensions with some Bulgarian split squats, just body weight, uh, as a bit of a superset in between the, the quad extension sets. I think that was great. I actually started seeing some veins building up in both VMOs, which is a great sign. So who knows, there might be some, uh, might be some, what do you call it? Chances yet for the classic physique legs to come in. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, let's do this. Other side. Oh man, that feels good. Feels good. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're gonna up it by ten for this one, and then one, uh, five for the last set. I reckon. So we'll go up to 45, then 50. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going up to 45. This will be a challenge in itself, so like 50 is gonna be pretty gnarly. We'll see how we go. Flip that screen over. Okay, let's get it done. Nice and tight. Boy. Okay, I always find this leg's a bit harder anyway, so we should be able to get 15 on this leg, that means. No. Oh, nice. Okay, as you can tell with that, we want to make sure that when we come up, we hold it for a split second and then control it down. There's no point just pumping, thrusting up weight without making sure your brain knows it's got that tension, got that, you know, needs that contraction, needs that muscle to do its damn job. So yeah, make sure that whenever you're doing a weight, a movement, you want to control the weight, <laughs> you know? 
Again, you shouldn't be able to pick something up and not control it down. Not really, if you're trying to build muscle, that is. Okay, one more set. Okay, let's get this last one done, guys. Finish strong. Uh, yep, I've already moved it onto the 50 kilos. Let's get it done. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay, 12 and a half. That's what we're going to match. Oh boy. Here we go. Okay. Happy with that. Okay, we finished strong, guys. I don't know if they look alright. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Either way, that's all done and dusted. Okay guys, either way, I need to wrap it up and wrap it up fast. So, had a great leg day. That felt really good. That's something that I definitely needed. It makes me feel like there's still a fighting, fighting chance. That's the one. Fighting chance for these legs uh, coming up now. It's 10 weeks to the day to step on stage. So we're going to drop basically 9 to 10 kilos in 10 weeks, which is definitely, definitely doable. Everything's on track with the conditioning, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty sure. Either way, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow, which is arm day. Good day. <laughs> And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys had a good day, had a great training session if you trained towards being sexy, swole, shredded and sweaty. Uh, but most of all, stay tuned for the next video and always remember to squeeze the juice. Okay guys, catch you later.